Hi, Dawn Stenzel-Menti, you're watching The Dawn Show and you're seeing the sign Build Jake's Place, a place built in honor of a little boy named Jake who lived on this earth two and a half years. And uh, we've been having a wonderful conversation with his grandparents, Jim and Lynn Cummings, uh, who really, uh, you know, I thank you for sharing your story because we, we have our Kleenex out and it's <laughs> tearful, but it's also giving so much hope to so many children who need a place to play, a boundless playground. And now people can actually donate a uh, brick or they can donate to what, well, can... what was Miracle Field, but it has a new name. Well, um, the whole idea of the Boundless Playground was that we were going to not do just one and done, that we would build others. But this wonderful Challenge Grove Park is 19 acres, and, and there is this wonderful piece of property that's, next that's to it. That's our miracle field with the new sign up. And, and so um, we went back to the county and said, we have another idea. <laughs> you know, maybe um, there's this national organization called a Miracle League, and it has the ability to create miracle fields so that children that are in wheelchairs and, and other disabilities can play baseball because the surfacing, like the playground, is rubberized. So wheeled things can get around it, but children, when they fall, don't get hurt. Um, and so we took the idea to the county only to find out. Well, they, originally we were going to partner with them and do the fundraising, and then they were going to give us the ground again. Uh, but it so happened that freeholder Ed McDonald had the same idea and had f for years had been thinking about it. He so too has a child with He has a needs. child that has special needs. And uh, so, make a long story short, they eventually came to us and said, we're going to pay for it. We're going to build the field. And uh, that's so, music to your ears. Well, it, we gave, us a four, it gave us a four-year fast forward. <laughs> uh, we would have spent four years of fundraising. And uh, people have asked us, are you upset that it's not going to be called Jake's Field or something? We really, we wanted it a field for kids to play. And that's the bottom line. We really don't care. It's going to be called a wonderful thing. It's going to be called the boundless field and next to a boundless playground. It is boundless because kids of every ability will play with normally abled kids who will be their buddies. So some children. And what's a buddy? Can you explain yes. the buddy system? Well, first of all, a buddy can be anyone who's 12 or 99 and anything in between. And we're trying to see if we can have younger um, girls and boys, uh, 9, 10, and 11, perhaps, that can also help with getting the balls and helping on the field otherwise. But if you're a child that has Down syndrome, you might need somebody who just takes you by the arm. Or if you see some of the video of children playing Miracle League games, the uh, buddy is following behind the child because the child is doing the running all by themselves. But sometimes a buddy is really needed to push a wheelchair you know, yeah. or to really... And it's also building self-esteem. I have a, a nine and six-year-old, so for my nine-year-old, his school partners with other schools, and he loves it because it he feels sure. like he gets the real gift as a nine-year-old boy Absolutely. to be Those a, a buddy and a partner and a mentor. Those kids get the best gift, I think. Yeah. Uh, they really do. Some of these children are extremely disabled. Uh, I went to see a Miracle League game last year, and, and uh, there was this wonderful little girl that was so excited. Literally, if she could have had her wheelchair do wheelies, she would have. And she could only move one finger of one hand. And all she kept saying was, I'm going to play baseball. I'm going to play baseball. <laughs> she was just so thrilled. And I spoke to another child, and they said, I've never played a game before. And this is going to be my first game. And this child was 13, 14. And it I, shouldn't it's, be. It shouldn't be, you know, yeah. that that should happen in, in this world. And the buddies... I always said to Linda, the girls came in from one team and they were all the girls who wouldn't talk to me in high school. I mean, all these <laughs> extraordinarily good looking, well put together women who really knew what they were doing uh -oh. and were there to help these kids uh. and have a great time. And, so and somebody's just are, wonderful. Somebody's could even be a parent, you know, a dad. My my. Um, Lots of dads. Part of the Moms. inspiration for this was that, that my son-in-law's father and he have played baseball their whole lives together. Uh. So had Jake been able to play baseball, his dad, Joe, would have wanted to play it with him. Right. And so that was, that was kind of the backstory of why this was important to us. But so a dad or a mom can be the child's buddy. Um, some buddies are, are the same people all the time. And then like Jim said, there are people who come in um, that are schools that'll come in on a Saturday. There's usually about 10 uh, different teams 
and they play three innings. So for five or six hours, there's a lot of buddies that are going to be in need, going to be needed. Well, well, we it, need managers and coaches and so all kinds this of is volunteers. An, this is an all call for talent. This Absolutely. is an all call for talent them. and volunteers. Yep. You know, it, it's amazing to think of what you've done because in fact, there are only about a hundred of these kinds of boundless playgrounds in America. Right, right. Uh, so, so in South Jersey, to think that, that you've done this and, and now going on with the field, it's, it's pretty darn amazing. Well, it's also very life-giving. You know, um, grief can, can do crazy things to you. It can take and zap you totally of your energy and different members of the family act in different ways. Our family couldn't even come to family dinners, but we could go to the boardroom. And some of us, like me, I gear up and I work harder. And so it turned out that in grief, that's how I reacted. Mm -hmm. So everybody- That's your coping mechanism, yes, in other words. Yes, everybody has different ways to do things. And, and so um, with, with a family that was united for a single mission, it gave us a way to be family, a different way maybe than other families for at least the first year or so, but it gave us a way to keep coming together, to, to be in the boardroom, if you will, to be a family um, and to have a mission and, and then to garner thousands of other people, literally thousands of other people around that same dream. So it is. A, and it's a, all about a dream. But I also think that, uh, and I have uh, many special needs children in my family, that the family, the parents, and so on, go through their own process. Yep, sure. Everybody where, does. Where, in other words, it's not easy to have a special needs child. So, in a way, to inspire, to let uh, folks know that no matter what your child is going through, there's a place for your child. Right. Right. It's inspiring happy place. and empowering, yep. and we need that. Our conversation is going to continue about Jake's place uh, with his grandparents, Lynn and Jim, when we come right back. Dawn Stens Lamenti, live on the Dawn Show. The website, uh, if you need it, billjakesplace.org, uh, billjakesplace.org. Lynn and Jim Cummings, thank you so much for sharing the story oh, of, your, of your grandson, inspiring, helping so many children. Thank you I for I hope you're as inspired us. as I am. Have a great one. See you tomorrow at 11 a.m.